is a very exciting day. Holy crap, guys! This right here is the ViewSonic Curve Display VP3881, and I am so excited to have it. <laughs> Let's get this thing into the office. Before I even attempt to bring that monitor up here, I think I gotta deal with this desk. It's a mess. Also, got the light dome mini. Look how cute it is! I was debating between the full-size light dome and the mini. I'm just in a really small space, and the mini just seemed to make sense. Although I kind of wish I went with the full size one, but I'm not sure if it would have been too big. Anyways, I'm gonna clean up this desk. Milo had his first day of school yesterday. Went pretty well. He's doing good. Also look at this adorable photo. I think the monitor is gonna go there. Still figuring out what to do with this guy. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit it beside or maybe I'll just leave it there. I mean, it's a little silly, but uh, whatever. That is looking pretty dang sweet. I am super pumped to get using this monitor. I think I'm going to have to jump straight into some color grading to really test out this thing. By the way, the lovely people over at ViewSonic did send me this monitor. Technically, it's not really a sponsored post, but they did send it to me, so obviously I'm going to have a bias towards that. But from the research I've done, they I'm pretty sure they hooked me up with like the dopest widescreen monitor they have. So I'm stoked, let's go. Okay, so I got one problem, and it's that. Hey, that's, that's we got a second problem, and it's this. But for real, I gotta get a new power bar to support, ow, what the frick? I gotta get a new power bar. Oh, frick, maybe a new dog too. New power bar, but let's ignore that cable management. Okay, back to the monitor. Oh, hi, puppy. Oh my gosh. That is so big! Oh my! It takes so long for the mouse to get from one end to the other. Can I play Overwatch on this? <laughs> Please? But yeah, now that I have this new monitor, it is time for me to show you guys how I color grade. This guy is so nippy. Look at this. He's constantly biting. So it is now the next day. I essentially had to put everything on hold because this puppy had the biggest puppy tantrum we have ever seen. He was out of control, very nippy. Uh, we tried everything. We took him outside, we tried doing training sessions, we tried playing with him, but nothing was working, so we ended up just having to force a nap by putting him in his crate. Um, unfortunately, he didn't stop crying till 1.30 in the morning, and I wasn't down to continue filming this video at 1.30 in the morning. So here we are the next day. Let's continue. <laughs> now, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without a good monitor. Uh, like I said in my videos, this thing over there is not very good. It's just for gaming. It plays games well. I'll give it that. Unfortunately, I am not a professional gamer. Although, if you do play video games, you can have yourself a very immersive experience with the 38-inch display. I just wouldn't recommend playing any serious FPV games if you need that accuracy and frame rate. But otherwise, you can have yourself a very enjoyable experience with this monitor. So big shout out to ViewSonic for hooking me up with this monitor. It is the VP3881. It is a curved display, 4K 3840 by 1600 resolution. It supports HDR10 display. From what I understand is that it's not technically an HDR monitor, but it can in encode an HDR signal, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Another nice thing is that I can plug in my MacBook and it will charge as well as display using just one cable. But honestly, I am very impressed with the colors on this thing. It makes me feel like I am back at work editing in the office. All right, so here we are in Premiere. I have two shots. These were some test looks that uh, me and a friend did uh, down in my basement, which I'm going to turn into a studio, which actually all the studio stuff just arrived this morning, so that will be coming very soon. I'm very excited. So the first shot here is like an in-camera teal and orange using some RGB lights. And then the next shot here is more of a clean shot. Uh, both of these were shot in uh, Red's D-Log film. So that I can show you guys how I color grade these back to good looking Rec 709. All right, let's start off with the first one here. Um, now for my color grading, I just use Lumetri's Color. I think that's how you say it, I, I don't know. I used to use Colorista, it's a plugin by Red Giant, but recently it's kind of been slowing down my premiere, so I no longer use it. I apologize if you hear the dog in the background. That's life right now. So we're gonna select our clip and go over to our Lumetri Color. 
And the first thing we are going to do is a color correction. Now there are three attributes we want to focus on, contrast, color, and saturation. The first thing I'm going to do is contrast. So take the contrast slider, slide her up. Now my footage is very flat, so I'm going to slide that all the way to 100. Um, your footage, maybe you're only sliding it to like 30. It just all depends on that log color profile you have on your computer, on your camera. <laughs> Actually, one thing we should have done before we started is pull up our scopes, your Lumetri scopes. If this is your first time opening this up, I would recommend using the waveform Luma in the vector scopes YUV. Let me quickly explain what this is. I recently heard a very interesting description of how the waveforms actually work. Um, imagine my image here was laid on its back and then the highlights were lifted and the shadows were pulled down. That is essentially what we're seeing. So my face being in the middle here, being the highest point of information, and then my shirt down here being the lowest and it, it scans left to right so we got the, the left side of the wall here and the right side of the wall here. Now there's a couple of rules we want to follow. The skin tones we want to keep around 70 and let's say this was an outdoor shot we don't want our sky to go outside 100 or it'll be blown out. Although if you look at your data and you have a hard line that means you have blown out information. In my example here we don't have any missing information. We have all the data here. The first thing I'm going to do is actually start with the blacks and the shadows. So I'm going to take my blacks over here on the Lumetri and pull them down to about zero. I can be pretty loose with this right now and then I'm going to take my shadows and pull them down as well. And that's going to create a little bit of contrast. Uh, now I'm going to grab my whites and this is mostly going to be my skin tone. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on the background, just focus all on the skin. I'm going to pull that up until I see my waveform start to reach 70. So this little peak here I believe would be the, the white on my shirt. So we want to focus on this little hump here. Uh, we can pull that up a bit more and probably stop around 70. Uh, now I'm just going to create a little bit more contrast with the, the highlights. Actually I'm going to pull my whites down a bit and then compensate with my whites here. Let's see how that's looking. Now here, I feel like I'm not getting enough contrast between my whites and my highlights. So what I'm gonna do is go down to curves and then RGB curves. And you may be familiar with an S curve. I'm just gonna add a very slight S curve to this image just to add a little bit more contrast because I feel like the contrast slider isn't doing it enough. Uh, now I'm gonna come back to my basic and really just tweak those highlights and whites until I find a spot where, where I have enough contrast in the skin. Now so far I've just been using the highlights and whites to adjust my skin, but we also have the left side of my face here, or my right side of the face, uh, that is actually a shadow. So I can pull that down to create a bit more contrast and then play with the highlights a bit more. Now let's take a look at our waveform. Um, this is more personal preference. A lot of people like to make sure that they're touching zero. Some people, depending on your look, maybe you want it above zero. This is the one part where I feel like everybody's just a little bit different, but I like to go all the way down to set a little bit of data as being clipped. Just a little bit though, like that might be too much. Like I want to touch and then a little bit more. Yeah. And then I'm just going to keep tweaking that contrast till it looks where I like it. I want my skin to pop, but not have too much of like an overexposed pop, which if we keep it around 70, we will be good. That's looking pretty good to my eyes and it's looking good on the vector scope. So I can already tell you using this monitor, it is a night and day difference. Like, like when I pull my blacks down, like on my other monitor, I wouldn't see a difference between this. Actually on your screen right now, you might not see much of a difference here, but in my shirt, I can really see the difference there. So I'm pretty happy with the contrast here. Let's move on to color. So let's focus on the skin tones. My skin tone seems to be pretty all right, but maybe yours is a little bit green or a little bit warm or magenta. Uh, so what we want to do is go over to our color control, go to opacity, and we're just going to draw a rough mask around a portion that would just be skin. Now let's take a look at our vector scope here. Sometimes you will have more of a straight line. It looks like for me in this shot, I have more of a blob, but that'll still work. So we can see that this like cloud is a little bit heavy on the magenta side. Sorry, I should say this line going diagonal here, the, uh, the eye line, that is where skin tones lie. Um, doesn't matter what color skin you have, every skin tone lies on that line. So in this case, it looks like I could probably go a little bit more green towards the green and maybe a little bit warmer. So let's see how that looks. Let's pull that a little bit towards green, just a smidge though, and then, and then a little bit warmer as well. That's good. 
Um, so now let's go disable our opacity there. My thing here is I always, when I disable my opacity, if it looks weird, I probably have to fix something. But here, I think that actually looks pretty good. That is essentially it for color. Now we're just doing the color correction so far. We're gonna get to color grading in a minute. The next step is saturation. If we take a look at our vector scope here, we are totally color blown out in the cyan. So we're gonna deal with that in a minute. But if we just look at our skin tone here, it actually looks a little bit dull. So I'm gonna pull that up maybe 10%. Not a ton because I don't think we really need it. This step, you can use your vector scope if you wanted to create a mask like we did for exposure. But typically I don't find that it's all that useful. I would say you just wanna kinda of keep it within this range. You don't want it going past maybe halfway towards a color. Um, in that sense, you're probably oversaturating. But I find just doing the saturation by eye is totally fine. Uh, realistically, in a color grade, color and saturation are the least important of the two. Your contrast is actually way more important. The reason being is that everybody sees color different. Everybody's brain processes color differently. It's important to have good skin tones, color, and saturation, but the contrast is what your brain is really going to interpret more. So now let's deal with the overexposed cyan. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go down to my curves, hue saturation curves. Now I'm going to go to the very first one, which is hue versus saturation. I'm going to use my eyedrop tool. And I'm going to select that cyan there because I know that that's what the problem is. And I'm just going to lower it until that color comes back in with our triangle or octagon shape thing. We essentially just don't want that color exceeding that box. Now, technically, it probably isn't going to make a difference because anything outside this box isn't going to render. You're only going to see the color within that box. Uh, but let's also do the same with this orange over here. We're gonna pull that down just to pull it back in the box. Now, keep in mind that this is going to affect my skin tones. Uh, so I'm just going to do it ever so slightly so that we don't see any effect. Let's just double check. Yeah, we're good. Now another good thing with this panel is let's say we didn't like the blue or cyan in this shot. Maybe we wanted something a little bit more like purple or something. Uh, we could eye drop that color and then pull it towards the color we do want. You don't want to pull this too far because you will start to lose some image quality. Like you can only stretch your video data so far. Uh, I shot this on a red, so we have quite a bit of latitude. Um, but if you're shooting on like a EOS R, you might not have this much latitude to pull your colors. Your image might start to break down. But we can really manipulate our colors with these curves. Again, you just wanna be careful not to mess up your skin tones. You can reset any of these curves by just double clicking. Another thing a lot of people like to do is completely mute their highest whites and their lowest blacks. So what you can do is go down to the Luma versus saturation, and we're just gonna pull the saturation all the way down. By the way, this would be our blacks, and over here would be our whites. And on both sides, I'm just gonna pull it down. Uh, honestly, you might not see a difference, we can see a little bit in the blacks there that it is doing a little something, but this is just going to help you have those clean whites and clean blacks. I would say that that is a pretty solid color correction. We went over contrast, color, and saturation there. Uh, now we can move on to our actual color grade. There are two ways you can color grade an image. You can use a LUT, which is already a pre-made look, or you can create your own look. Personally, I don't have the time to create a look for every single video or every shot, uh, so I like to just color correct and then slap on a LUT and just tweak it a little bit. But let's say you want to create your own color grade. We could go to our color wheels. Um, let's say we wanted to give this like a teal and orange. We literally just pull a little bit of a teal into the shadows here and then contrast the mids with some warmth. And then maybe in the highlights, we could add a little bit more warmth as well. And that's just gonna give us a little teal and orange look. Um, now, obviously in this shot, it's not very useful because we are doing an in-camera teal and orange, but maybe in our next shot, it will look a bit better. Now, this video isn't a full Lumetri color tutorial, but if you wanted to get a little bit more in depth, say you wanted to protect your skin tones, we could use the HSL secondary, select our skin tone, um, and then just affect the skin tones here so that your color grade isn't doing anything it shouldn't be. Now correcting your skin tones, I would say a lot of this is going to be by eye. You can use your vector scopes like we mentioned earlier, but I would say that a good colorist is going to be able to do this by eye. 
In fact, I know a lot of filmmakers that don't even touch their scopes. A lot of filmmakers you probably follow on the internet. <laughs> so that is a color correction and look all within one Lumetri color. Honestly, I wouldn't even attempt a lot of this on my old monitor. I would try and do something and I literally couldn't see the difference. So in all my other videos, I kind of just didn't bother color grading. Um, Cause if you can't see your color grade, What's the point, right? I would just do a quick contrast and I wouldn't really touch the colors. Now let's say you wanted to use a LUT, which is what I do all the time. Let's just clear our look here we did. Go into creative and select a LUT. Honestly, my favorite LUTs are Maddie's uh, Cine LUTs 2.0. The one that I use all the time is Cinema. These, this is the same thing we did in Maddie's videos. I'll add the LUT and then bring it down to about 25, maybe up to 30 within that range. Now, the nice thing with this LUT is that it, it kind of squeezes your shadows and highlights as well and kind of gives it a little bit of a cinematic look. But what's real important is that it will change those colors into more uh, cinematic colors. In this shot, it's not really doing too much. If I was outdoors, it would really affect the green and it would add some some warmth into the highlights and shadows, or sorry, highlights and then some, some cools into the shadows. So let's hop into our next shot and quickly just run through a quick color grade, kind of recapping what we just went over. So the first thing we're gonna do is contrast. I'm gonna pull the blacks down to zero and then as well as shadows just to create a bit more contrast. Pull those whites up to about 70, highlights as well. And then I'm gonna compensate with the whites back down and just kind of wiggle those back and forth until I get good contrast in my skin. And then also we are hitting 70 on the IRE. I don't know what IRE stands for. I just know that that's the value unit. I'm gonna add a slight S curve again, just to give myself a little bit more wiggle room with the sliders. Now, another thing here, say you had a sky in the background that was like, fully white, really bright, um, that would be your whites. Your skin tones would not be your whites. It's just in this example, um, my skin is the brightest thing here. So if I pull my whites, it's really going to affect my skin tones. Where typically you're probably just going to be using highlights and shadows to adjust your skin tones. But in these examples, it's pretty dramatic. Okay, now we can quickly do some saturation. Probably can do the same 110, looks pretty good. That kind of leaves us like halfway between our colors here, which seems to be working for me. Now that we have contrast, color, and saturation, I'm gonna start adding a look. So again, I'm gonna use a LUT, bring it down to 25. Looking pretty good, now I'm just gonna toggle on and off. Uh, now it's adding a little bit of green to my skin tones, uh, which maybe that's the look you're going for, but I'm gonna add a little bit of magenta to compensate, just like the tiniest bit, like four. And that is looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna go down to our curves and I'm gonna do the, the mute that we mentioned earlier. I'm gonna mute the blacks and mute the whites. Uh, and that'll just keep a clean image. Another thing you could do is in your Lumetri panel here is you could add another Lumetri color effect. Um, and then from here, let's say we wanted to just boost the exposure. Uh, we could go back to our color control and just affect a certain area. That's a really nice thing about Lumetri. You can do that. You can also track those masks into your footage. Um, and that's just gonna allow us to affect a certain part of the image without hurting the rest. Uh, so that can be good if you're trying to just fix your skin tones, but keep the background the way it is. There's many applications for you to use that. All right, two more quick tips. Uh, one, let's say you're always shooting in C-Log. I would recommend creating a C-Log correction preset using Lumetri. So in order to do that, you would do your correction, and you go to your effects controls, right click Lumetri color, and then save preset. And then you can name it like whatever, C-Log uh, correction. And then you can just slap that into your master layer and that'll affect the whole clip. And then you would do your LUT on top, which you could do on a adjustment layer or you could do it um, just in the, the primary. Uh, let me explain what that is. So let's say I chopped this video up a whole bunch. So now this, this clip is put into a bunch of uh, files here. And let's just say I only color graded the first clip. So the first clip is, looks good and then the rest is all log again. Uh, so what I could do is take my look, I'm gonna control X, cut it, and then put it into my master. And then that way it'll apply it to every clip in my timeline that is that clip. And then what I could do is just add an adjustment layer and then throw my look on here. And then that way it, uh, it just gives me a little bit more control to mess around with my look. So now I have an adjustment layer that just affects the colors. Um, looks like Premiere didn't like that. Okay, save. 
So that is essentially it. That is how I color grade my videos. But now thanks to ViewSonic, I can color grade my videos with color accuracy. So if you are a professional filmmaker or photographer looking for a monitor, I would highly recommend the VP3881. That is it for me. Thank you guys for watching. If this video helped you, let me know down below. I'll see you in the next one.